ir latviešiem tāds teiciens, mēs pagādnes nav nākotnes. Un vakar Nacionālā bibliotekā notika ļoti interesanta un vajadzīga konference, ko rīkoja Eiropas Savienības komisijas šajā Latvijā, politoloģijā pienība un Latvijas institūtas. Proti Latvijas simgad, bet skatoties caur Eiropas prizmu, caur Eiropas Savienības prizmu drīzāk. Kā iepriekšējais gads jums izskatījās, un kā nākamais tādā ziņā varētu izskatīties, skatoties uz šodienas problēmām, izaicinājumu, panākumiem un cilvēlēm. Es piedāvāju domu grauts no konferences, izvilkums, kas man šķita visbūtiskākajā, kas var palīdzēt jums, man, Latvijas tautai, eiropiešiem, orientēties šajā, teiksim, pārmaiņu, strauju pārmaiņā, pārmaiņu laikā. Ceru, cerums, ka jums tas patiks. Each of us is determined to steer our own course, especially those who spent uh, half a century in dependence, in voluntary chained to the Soviet Union. Take Latvia and Finland. Both had similar levels of development before the World War II. It makes the distinction clear. Our economic development under communist rule reads like one giant missed opportunity. This makes us all eager to make up the lost time. We continue to build on our hard-won independence. Strategic alliances safeguard, complement and reinforce our sovereignty. We are fully fledged, well-respected and active members of the United Nations, NATO, the European Union and Euro area. At the core of Europe is where we belong. When you look at the circumstances under which the Latvian state was born and declared in 1918, you could hardly put together a less favorable scenario for a positive outcome. If you wanted uh, to bet on the outcome in terms of probabilities and likelihoods of such an adventure bringing uh, an outcome such as the participants desired, I think that statistically, mathematically, logically, you would say this is a pipe dream. These people have a beautiful dream of having a country, of being a nation, of having their say over their native land, to become masters in their own home, as they put it at the time. And many would say this is impossible, because after all, the Western powers wanted stability in this part of the world. The only concern they had was whether the Reds or the Whites would be winning in Russia and how this would influence their interests and their relationships with this part of Europe. At the very beginning of events, they hardly had a thought uh, for the populations living on the ground because they were small and nobody had ever heard about them before and therefore they didn't seem important. The 20th century brought 20 years for these nations to somehow sort of wave and say to Europe, hello, we are here, we exist. Now, over 20 years have passed, longer than between the two world wars, but there are still blanks on the mental map of Europeans. And I think it's the task of the next 100 years, among the many things that we already heard, very concrete, important, practical, necessary things that we need to do not just in the next hundred years, but in the very near future, the next decades, we do have, I do believe, to have adjust our mental maps. And if we want to have a strong Europe, and a Europe that in the next century will be stronger than it has ever, ever been before, remotely like it in previous history, then we have to start working on our ideas, on our concepts, on the way we look at things, on the way we interpret inter uh, information, propaganda, and so on. It is quite a challenge and quite a task. Atskatoties simts gadu ilgā pagātnē, mēs varam teikt, ka savā ziņā ir zināma līdzības starp to, kas notika 1918. gadā un nākamajās dekādēs, un arī pašlaik, Pēc pirmā pasaules kara Latvija, Igaunija, Lietuva, daudz austrumu Eiropas valsts ieguva savu neatkarību, sabrūkot veselai rindai 
impērija un lielā mērā arī, protams, diezgan asiņainās cīņās. Tai pašā laikā uzreiz pēc tam, diemžēl tā laika Latvijas varas vīriem, tāpat kā Eiropas varas vīriem un valsts vīriem vajadzēja nodarboties ar divu problēmu risināšanu. Pēc lielās depresijas milzīgu demokrātijas deficītu, lielā mērā populismu ekstrēmismu un ļoti, ļoti naidīgi ideoloģiju parādīšanos. Otra lieta – ārpus Eiropas kultūra tāpas un juridiskās un politiskās tāpas esošu valstu vēlmi izaicināt starptautisko tiesību un starptautisko sistēmu un lietu kārtību. Manuprāt, skan ļoti, ļoti līdzīgi situāciju saprakstam, kādu mēs redzam arī šodien. Arī šodien mēs redzam, ka pēc tās saucamās lielās recesijas ir ļoti daudz un dažādas gan labēji, gan kreisi tendētas ekstrēmistu un populistu kustības, kas uzskata, ka visu, ko mēs esam darījuši, veidojuši Eiropas Savienību, veidojuši NATO, veidojuši demokrātiju, būtams ir jāizmat miskastē, ka mēs varam runāt par kaut kādu dīvainu vertikālu vai neliberālu demokrātiju, ka mēs varam runāt, ka cilvēku tiesības nav universāls, bet katrai kultūrai un nācijai savas, ka likuma vara ir kaut kas ļoti specifisks, katrā valstī atkal ļoti īpašs. Un mēs redzam arī valstis, kas cenšās izaicināt esošo lietu kārtības starptautiski, kaut vai notikumu, kas notiek šobrīd Ukrainā, kas notiek Sīrijā, un patiesību sakot, kas notiek pasaulē. Savā ziņā līdzības ir. Eiropas nākotas veidošanās svarīgas būtu solidaritātes princips. Šis pamatprincips priekšplānā ļautu izvirzīt nevienlīdzības samazināšanu Eiropas Savienībā, Nevienlīdzības samazināšana ir nepieciešama, lai neveidotos privileģēto kasta. Tas ir tā saucamie globalizācijas ieguvēji. Un otrā pusē ļauža masas, kas jūts kā globalizācijas zaudētāji. Tiek minēts, ka tieši tā piedalījās balsojumā par Brexit. Ar solidaritātes principu cieši saistīts ir konverģents princips. Tas nozīmē – aizvien lielāku tuvināšanos starp atšķirīgajiem. Tā tas skanētu latviski. Satraucoši, ka Eiropas komisija vienā no saviem dokumentiem par Eiropas nākotni ir konstatējusi, ka konverģence Eiropas Savienībā ir apstājusies. Vēl satraucošāk, ka netiek piedāvāts skaidrojums, kāpēc finanšu un ekonomikas krīze Katrā ziņā skaidrs, ka Latvijas interesēs ir harmoniska Eiropas teritorijas attīstība un asimetrija koriģēšana. Tāpēc būtiski loma ir kohēzijas politikai, par ko mēs cīnāmies. Būtiski loma ir arī priekšlikumam veidot Eiropā universitāšu tīklus, kas tuvināt Eiropas jauniešus un līdz ar to arī mūsu visus. Latvijā ir primāri svarīgi noturēt Baltijas valstu vienotību. Interesanti, ka šo vienotību savā ziņā nosaka ārpusi. ASV prezidents tikās ar visu trīs Baltijas valstu prezidentiem kopā, tikšanās ar Francijas valsts vadītāju arī bija šādā formātā. Tātad ārpasaule mūs redz kopā. Skatoties mazliet tālāk, svarīgi ir turpināt kopt Baltijas un Ziemeļvalstu vienotību. Un visbeidzot trešais princips, kas būtu svarīgs, domājot par mūsu kopīgo Eiropas nākotni, ir kritiskās domāšanas princips. Tas ir svarīgs demokrātijas pamatprincips, to starp meklējot zāles pret populismu. Ir zināms, ka latvieši uz lietām raugās ar veselīgu skepsi, arī ar piesardzību. Skaidrs, ka mums Eiropas Savienībā būtu nepieciešams stiprināt spējas kritiski izvērtēt lietas un notikumus, piemēram, mēdīju telpā. Arī politikas vidē tas ir aktuāli, lai saprast, kurš piedāvā politiku un kurš populismu. can uh, endure long enough 
with their existence if they are not democratic. And I will put more. I don't want to speak here about democratic states. I would like to speak here about liberal democracy, which is, in my view, a fundamental part of identity of European continent. And this is maybe what passed um, uh, some of our listeners in some weeks ago when President Macron of France was speaking in European Parliament, that he actually mentioned this idea that liberal democracy is not anymore something which is a political principle about what we establish and we uh, execute in Parliament or in the government, but liberal democracy with all the values which we can put under it. It is a part of European identity. And if we are seeing it like this, then it is already something more what we are discussing, because those uh, challenges which are coming today uh, on our European societies are so deep that they are touching our identity. They are not touching any more surface, they are touching where we are coming from. And this is where people see and feel their fear. And uh, again, as our former president, Vaira Vici Freiburg, told, if people are fearing something, either it is on individual basis or it is on collective basis, then unfortunately, and we noticed this uh, after Hitler came to power in Germany, or even after we were under the Soviet occupation or Nazi occupation, quite intelligent personalities very easily can turn something very close to animals. They can betray, or they can uh, give uh, information um, and become inform informators on their neighbors, uh, they can cause pain, or in the better case, they simply can be a sleepwalkers or somebody who simply doesn't notice what is happening around. The trouble, what is happening, we do not notice. Uh, I think the one way how to start to feel more European is uh, to try to live a little bit, uh, or short period at least, short period of time outside Europe. As I said, I just came back from uh, India for a couple of weeks of, uh, in India. And then, um, again, on the emotional level, just very uh, brief comparison. You are going to uh, some church somewhere in Europe. Feeling is that I'm not a believer. I am even not Christian. But feeling inside the church, is, it's something very familiar. Uh, you are faith. You are feeling that somehow this is uh, my I belong to, to this society. And then you are going to some very famous temple somewhere in India. It's very interesting. It's, it's uh, very, uh, you can learn a lot of things there. But first feeling, and not only first feeling, feeling is, uh, this is something different. I don't belong to, to this particular place. I don't belong to this particular way of thinking about, about uh, different things. We lost a historic memory. Many of young generations losing historic memory. Uh, yes, I also remember the 4th of May much better than 18th of November 1918. I was not bor born at that time. But at this moment we can see that younger generation is increasingly detached from those literary uh, values which previous generations were keeping uh, on the high shelves in their bookstores. Uh, they do not know any more, any more much about history. They think it's not relevant. And one of the consequences, not going again deeper in this, is that we can see even in such societies like Russia, that there are parts of public society which are anymore not afraid of the war. They are not afraid anymore to lose their freedoms and democracy because they think it is God-given. It is a part of theirs. They are breathing around and nothing will happen if they will lose this. And this might be the one of the biggest failures what might happen that people do not have any more this historic memory. Ladies and gentlemen, the next hundred years are going to bring challenges as all the hundred years before. In that, they're not going to be different. They're going to be different in a manner this will happen. The best way to build a house is to put it on solid foundations. This century and the decades we have just lived, I feel Latvia has been working on the foundations of a modern state renewed reborn and ready to face whatever the future is to bring. My hope is that the same commitment, the same conviction, and the same desire for a civilized and humanistic world 
will infuse us all, our neighbors, north, south, east, and all. All of us in Europe, whether we're in the Union or not, whether we're in the Eurozone or not, that, in fact, the rest of the world would be swayed to move in that direction. But it will not happen by itself. It will need convinced people, people who know what they think, why they think it, who have some idea of history, who have some idea of what the world is about and what is there, what is out there, not blank spaces, but real, what really is there. And with that, as a starting point, I think we have a good chance. So let us hope that all of us together, we can build a century that's much better than the one before. Nu redzēt, pēc visa tā, ko jūs dzirdējāt, redzējāt, varam iedomāties, kā, mē, kā Latvija izskatītos, kā Eiropa izskatītos, ja Eiropas Savienība būtu nodibināt 20. gados, tūlīt pēc Pirmā pasaules kāra un nevis pēc Otrā pasaules kāra. Viela pārdomāt. Paldies!